Baron von Steuben was born on September 17, 1730, in the fortress town of Magdeburg in the Kingdom of Prussia to a military family. He spent most of the first decade of his life in Russia with his father, a military engineer. At the age of 10, he and his father returned to Germany, where he received a formal education. At the age of 17, Steuben signed up for the Prussian army, which was considered the most professional and disciplined in Europe. In May 1756, he was a second lieutenant during the Seven Years' War. In 1758, he served as General Johann von Meer's adjutant and principal staff officer in a special detached corps. In 1759, Steuben was promoted to first lieutenant. On the 26th of June 1761, he was transferred to general headquarters where he served as a staff officer in the position of a deputy quartermaster. In 1763, at the age of 33, he was promoted to captain and he eventually became an aide-de-camp to Frederick the Great and was a member of the king's personal class on the art of war, where they trained officers in the complicated art of leadership. On April 29, 1763, shortly following the 1763 Treaty of Paris and Hubertusburg that ended the Seven Years' War, he was discharged from the Prussian army. He served as Grand Marshal to the Prince of Hoysland-Hechingen from 1764 to 1777. He received the title of Baron in 1771, which came with his subsequent post. In 1775, after working for the court for several years, Steuben, due to a reduction in his salary, sought some form of military work somewhere else. He tried employment in several foreign armies, including the Austrian, British, and French armies, but no job was offered. In 1777, it was rumored that he had been obliged to leave the court for unsavory conduct due in part to his homosexuality. So in that same year, he traveled to Paris, France in the hopes of finding a career across the Atlantic in America. In France, the French Minister of War recommended von Steuben to the American ambassadors to France, Silas Dean and Benjamin Franklin. However, the two ambassadors were unable to promise Steuben a rank or pay in the American army. He would have to go to America and present himself to Congress as a volunteer without pay. He first rejected the ideal but couldn't find employment anywhere else, so he eventually agreed to the terms. Benjamin Franklin in turn composed a letter introducing Steuben to General George Washington as a lieutenant general in the King of Prussia's service, a certain exaggeration of his actual credentials. Regardless, his extensive experience in the Prussian army gave him an abundance of knowledge that was uncommon for the times even for the British and French armies. He would bring these accomplishments and vital skills to the American soldiers that would transform this army into a great fighting force. On the 26th of September, 1777, with his passage to America paid for by the French government, Baron von Steuben, his Italian Greyhound, his aide-de-camp and his military secretary set sail for America to serve in the American Revolutionary War. On the 1st of December, 1777, he reached Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Steuben and his party then traveled overland reaching York, Pennsylvania on the 5th of February, 1778, where Congress resettled after being ousted from Philadelphia. When the Baron met with Congress, he presented them with a letter of introduction from Benjamin Franklin. The letter introduced him as His Excellency, Lieutenant General von Steuben, Apostle of Frederick the Great, even though he was only a captain. They accepted his offer to volunteer without pay until the successful completion of the war. On the 23rd of February, 1778, he reached Valley Forge and reported to duty to General George Washington, where he was appointed temporary inspector general. He went out into the camp to talk with the officers and men, inspect their huts, and scrutinize their equipment. The army was short on everything but hope. His first step was to write one standard method of drills for the army, as he did not speak or write in English, but his French was such that he could communicate with some of the officers. The drills would be written in French, then translated into English by his secretary with the help from John Lawrence and Alexander Hamilton, two of Washington's aides de camp. He tried to make the drills as simple as possible to help them get up to speed as fast as he could. Up until then, the American officers had the sergeants drill the men, but Steuben set a precedent by working with the troops personally. 
He selected about 100 men as a model company to train and demonstrate each new lesson, and they in turn successfully trained further companies until the entire army was trained under the same procedures as the first company of troops. In 1779, von Steuben's drill manual was published. It was called Regulations for the Order and Discipline of the Troops of the United States and became commonly known as the Army's Blue Book and remained the official U.S. military guide until 1812. But many of von Steuben's writings are still in use in today's manuals. Steuben's eclectic personality greatly enhanced his mistake. He trained the soldiers who at this point were greatly lacking in proper clothing themselves in full military dress uniform, swearing and yelling at them up and down in German and French. When that was no longer successful, he recruited Captain Benjamin Walker, his French-speaking aide, to curse at them for him in English. The American soldiers appreciated von Steuben's willingness to personally work with them. They also appreciated his use of colorful words in several different languages. To correct the existing policy of placing recruits in a unit before they had received training, von Steuben introduced a system of progressive training beginning with the school of the soldier with and without arms and going through the school of the regiment. Each company commander was made responsible for the training of new men, but the actual instruction was done by selected sergeants. Combat at that time was at close range, where rapid firing of your arms was of primary importance, and accuracy came down to little more than firing faster than the opposing line. Many of the regulations dealt with the manual of arms and firing drills. Speed of firing could only be obtained by drilling men in the handling of their firearms until the motions of loading and firing were mechanical. Firing was done in 8 counts and 15 motions. The new firing regulations were much simpler than those used by foreign armies and it sped up firing exceedingly. Once the individual could handle himself and his musket, he was placed in groups of three, then in groups of twelve, and taught to march. Another program developed by Steuben was camp sanitation. There had previously been no set arrangement of tents, huts, kitchens, and latrines. He immediately placed the kitchens and the latrines on opposite sides of the camp, with latrines on the downhill side. He organized housing according to regiments and companies. The results of the army training were evident on the 20th of May, 1778, at the Battle of Barren Hill, and then on the 28th of June, 1778, at the Battle of Monmouth. Washington recommended an appointment for Steuben as Inspector General and on the 5th of May 1778 Congress approved it with the rank and pay of Major General. In the winter of 1779 and 1780 his commission was representing Washington to Congress regarding the reorganization of the army. He later traveled with Nathaniel Green, the new commander of the Southern Campaign. He quartered in Virginia since the American supplies and soldiers would be provided to the army from there. He aided the campaign in the South during the spring of 1781, culminating in the delivery of 450 Virginia Continentals to Lafayette in June. He was forced to take sick leave, rejoining the army for the final campaign at Yorktown. At Yorktown, his role was a commander of one of the three divisions of Washington's troops. He gave assistance to Washington in demobilizing the army in 1783, as well as aiding in the defense plan of the new nation. He was discharged from the military with honor on the 24th of March, 1784. After the war, he became an American citizen by act of the Pennsylvania legislature in March of 1784 and later by the New York authorities in July of 1786. He had to repeatedly ask for compensation for his services from Congress, which they finally paid some, but not all, that he expected or needed. He was gifted land in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and New York. Finally, in 1790, he was granted a yearly pension of 2500 he may have had a keen mind for the military, but not for business, and found himself in such a difficult financial situation that he had to sell off most of his land. He would eventually move to his 16,000-acre farm in Oneida County, New York, where he died on the 28th of November, 1794, and was buried in a grove at what became the Steuben Memorial State Historic Site. He never married and had no children, and he left his property to his former aides de camp William North and Benjamin Walker, whom he had adopted after the war, and it has long been understood that he had a homosexual relationship with both men. 
Today, many pay homage to this great man on the month of September on Von Steuben Day. Places like Chicago and New York have huge parades with many of the participants marching, dancing, wearing German costumes, and playing German music. Surely, Steuben will never be forgotten in the narrative of the birth of this great nation. His dedication, brilliance, and enthusiasm to help the Continental Army achieve independence from Britain will forever ensure his legacy in American history.